Appreciate you guys coming out for another installment of Backside Comedy right here at Zimbo Tickle Skate Design. Give it up for yourselves for coming out. Appreciate you guys. My name is Chadwick Dravik. I'm one of your hosts tonight along with Ellie Summerling. Oh my gosh, we have an incredible lineup. You're going to be seeing Anna Gallagher. You're going to be seeing Aaron Bell. You're going to be seeing Maddie Cooper and your headliner John Deere. That's right. Get those hands going. Keep them going for your other host, for Ellie Summerling. I'm ready for autumn though. I've got my skeleton ready. Her name is Diane. Uh, she's my 90 year old great aunt. Um, she loves that joke. She's like, yeah, I'm skinny now. I'm like, bitch, you look like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> uh, she's very thin. Um, but no, she's very chill about her mortality. Like I said, she's 90. So like, she'll be chilling out in her chair with the dog and I'll be doing dishes. I'll go in to be like, hey, dinner's ready. And she's like, Diane, did I get you? Bitch, I swear to God. I swear to God, you did. You did get me. Are you happy? She is. She's overjoyed. I'll say, Diane, I love you to death, but you got to stop that. She's like, it's closer than you think. <laughs> Getting a little cooler out. That's lovely. I love the fall. I love it. I don't do well in the, in the, the hot, hot, high heat of summer. Um, I love the fall and I love the winter. And I'm really trying to lean into it this year because we don't have that many winters left, you know? <laughs> I do feel like I was kind of raised in the era of climate change. Like, like I grew up in Al Gore's America, just like a young child. And when I was a kid, my understanding of climate change, and I feel like all the people around me was like, um, our idea of climate change was like a polar bear standing on a piece of ice, and then like a baby polar bear standing on another piece of ice, and they just like slowly drifted away. And everyone was like, aww, you know? And then they just got in their Hummer and drove away, beep, beep. <laughs> And it's sort of escalated, I would say, in the 30 years that I've been alive. I, like, my idea of climate change now is, like, me looking at my brand new baby nephew being like, ooh, <laughs> who's going to tell him? <laughs> I don't know. It's not as fun when you're the polar bear is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> my baby nephew is just slowly drifting away. No, he's cute. He's, he's adorable. I love him. I like being an aunt. I like hanging out with my nephew. Um, I try to do that as much as I possibly can, but it's hard because family relationships are hard, right? Like I have a weird relationship with my brother. That's not uncommon uh, We used to get along really well, and then he had an eczema attack that caused all of his eyebrows to fall out <laughs> Now I don't really trust him, you know And that's hard <laughs> You don't really understand how important eyebrows are until they're gone. <laughs> you can really break up a family <laughs> Yo, uh, this place is cool. I just want to know, Chadwick, who stole all these street signs? Like, that's... Who vandalized this place to make this great, is what I'm fucking asking. My dad's been married six times. Yeah, whoa. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> so he has the same number of rings as Jordan for the wrong reasons? <laughs> like, the hardest part of my childhood is trying to figure out what to call my different stepmoms. <laughs> because I'm getting stepmom like an intern with the possibility of full-time hire. <laughs> they would start doing things without asking. I had to pull it aside, try calling me son way too early in a relationship. I was like, listen, thanks for breakfast in bed, but let's keep this on a first name basis because you're here for a good time, not a long time, buddy. But I have a very white sounding voice that confuses a lot of black people. The other day I was talking to an older black lady, she goes, you talk very proper. You sound like you went to an Ivy League school. I was like, man, we're at the unemployment office. <laughs> but it's hard being black and having this voice, because I can say the N-word, but it never sounds right. Like, I don't even think I should be allowed to say it. Like, but I went to high school in the suburbs, because I've been at a different public school experience than most black people. I knew I was privileged because I took stained glass art as an elective. <laughs> Like, everybody was painting the Sistine Chapel, I was painting Jesus with dreads. <laughs> uh, I've been here all day, seriously. I was working all day today. I was, man, I'll put a goddamn tie on. 
to make myself look presentable. Is it working? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Co-worker back there. Yeah, yeah. Going on 12 hours. <laughs> it's a long day today. It's a long day. I'm still working, actually, so if I hear the door beep, I gotta run up front. <laughs> well, she just got a robot, right? But they're taking over, aren't they? Taking our jobs, our purpose, as human beings. And it all started with vibrators, didn't it? <laughs> My mom gets like all concerned about like all these like dark, mysterious places I go in my free time to do comedy now. <laughs> and just so you know, when she's picturing her worst fears of where I am doing comedy, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> in my apartment, I have a huge moth infestation. Mm. Yeah, And it's gotten to the point where I'm like, all right, I definitely do have to do something about this. And it's not because like the amount of moths have increased or anything. It's just because I started to notice that um, I'm starting to understand moth mannerisms. <laughs> you know, like I used to walk into my apartment and be like, ugh, a moth. But now I walk in and I'm like, ugh, a sad moth? <laughs> <laughs> and also, moths fall under that category of bugs that just turn into dust when you kill it. So like, these moths are gaslighting me. Because I'm like, ew, you're gross. And I kill it, and then it's like, I was never even here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do think we got to cool it with the gaslighting, though. Okay, I was talking to my friend recently, and we were recounting our night out, and we disagreed about the pizza place we went to. And she was like, Anna, you always do this. You're gaslighting me. And I was like, gaslighting? Like, what happened to being incorrect? <laughs> you, guys from, you know, you're not from Philly. D.C., you said? D.C.? How long have you been in Philly? Uh, summer. Yeah. Oh, you're like new, new to Philly. That's awesome. My girlfriend and I live here in Philly, and uh, we were talking about moving. We were talking about leaving Philadelphia. And I was like, yeah, you know, there was a murder on our block. That's pretty scary. And she's like, yeah, and it's so loud. <laughs> That's a big complaint. Uh, you guys new to town, you guys know Wawa? You like Wawa? No? Yeah, we love the pizza. We really love the pizza. <laughs> All right, now you're just bullying me. Okay? <laughs> I work. I work for Wawa. I've worked for Wawa a long time. Actually, started working for Wawa in high school, which is crazy. I, yeah, I've worked at Wawa a long time. I actually went to school to be a teacher, and then I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm ready to be a teacher, but I still like to be bullied by teenagers. So that's <laughs> Wawa it is. And frankly, looking at my teacher friends, I feel like I dodged a bullet. You know, it's sort of, and uh, that's what I do. I work for Wawa during the day. Do comedy at night. Really just doing this until the Wawa thing works out, you know, and then <laughs> my day's coming. I'm gonna move up into sort of manager any day now, and then I don't have to do this. I have a coworker who got stabbed twice at work. That's pretty crazy. Oh, no. Yeah. Actually, craziest part of that story, that's not why he quit. <laughs> what? <laughs> so he got, he got stabbed. And that's not the first time. And then Wawa's solution was to move him to a new store. That's what they do when you get stabbed. They basically solved it the same way the church solves the priest thing. We're like, put you over here, that'll fix everything. I used to be the overnight manager of Wawa. And uh, I think we can all agree that no place needs to be open 24-7. Can we just decide, let's do that. Let's just all go to bed and not go to Wawa. Nothing good happens overnight at Wawa. It's nothing good. But uh, one night I was over and working overnight, and I just hear someone yell across the store, "Yo, whose baby is this?" <laughs> <laughs> and then no one answered. <laughs> and then I had to solve a mystery. <laughs> you know, while my management class did not prepare me for the loose baby situation, <laughs> while my management class is like a lot of like, "Hey, if anyone's upset, give them a gift card." Uh, baby did not. <laughs> Want a gift card? <laughs> Did not help the situation at all. <laughs> but no, she's cool. I love my aunt Diane. Um, she, I live with her full time because she is a fall risk. She's like a like a weeble wobble in reverse. You know, they weeble and they wobble and they don't fall down. We cannot get her to stay upright. <laughs> 
she will find a reason to be on the floor. And she's not supposed to walk without like somebody being there in case she falls. Um, so one night, a couple months ago, I was doing dishes at like two in the morning, because that's a normal time to do that. And I heard something behind me and I turn around. And I'm not sure if you've ever had a 90 year old just shambling towards you in the darkness, silhouetted by moonlight. I thought she was the frickin' Mothman. I almost pooped, I was like, ah! fell down at the sink, she was like, what's wrong? I was like, why are you up? And she was like, oh, I forgot. She couldn't remember what she was doing. And then she did remember, and she goes, oh, I wanted to ask you, there's a man in my bedroom? What? There's a man in my bedroom, and, and he, he wants me to go with him, but I told him I can't unless you said it was okay. And I was like, there's only a few options here, right? Either it was a nightmare, fingers crossed, or there's an actual man in your bedroom waiting for you to lure me back to him. And, or slightly more likely, the third option is that the angel of death himself is just waiting there for me to come and sign the transfer paper. Just, that was a little dark, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, I used to live in Miami, and when I lived in Miami, I had this roommate who was like not great at communicating. And I feel like that's pretty common when you're in your 20s, you have these roommates, and it's like, it was always things like, you know, she would invite people to come stay with us and not really give me any heads up or let me know. And I remember one time this happened, she came to me and she was like, Maddie, remember when I told you that my friend Celia was going to come stay with us next week? And I was like, um, I don't know, it's not really ringing a bell. Celia. And she was like, yeah, she's going to be in town for the alopecia conference. And I was like, skirt! <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I would have remembered alopecia conference. I think that combination of words would have stuck. And so imagine my surprise when Celia shows up with a full fucking head of hair. I was like, <laughs> like, I don't have alopecia. I'm not trying to speak for the community, but I was suspicious for sure. But I gave it a couple days. You know, she seemed nice enough. Uh, until five days later, she's been sleeping on my couch for a week. She's been eating my food, drinking my beer. I get a little angry, I get a little suspicious. I have a couple drinks, I get brave. I say, Celia, what's going on? Do you have alopecia or not? <laughs> she said, no, it's totally fine that you ask. Not a big deal. I actually have a really rare form of alopecia. It's called alopecia of the pussy. Only my pubes fall out. I'm like, Celia! What a freeloader. <laughs> Viagra is the only drug that you can't try with your friends. <laughs> it's like, hey man, want to smoke some weed? Yeah, sure. Hey man, want to do some coke? Yeah, sure. Hey man, want to do some Viagra? Never speak to me again! Go grab two rulers. Yeah, my dad's a retired cop that lives in Hawaii. So if he dies, I can't afford to go to his funeral. <laughs> I'd have to start a GoFundMe to grieve. Like, I hate Zoom comedy, but I love Zoom funerals, guys. It's the greatest <laughs> idea ever. Like, I'd have to catch two flights to see that man. If one of them got canceled, I'm not going. <laughs> I sent a nice little postcard in the mail. Rest in paradise. Aloha from Philly. I love my grandparents, but I regret getting the name's tattooed on my arm. I love my grandmother, but I hate seeing Elizabeth when I jerk off. Mm. You're like, mm -hmm. well, I'm a huge soccer fan now. Soccer chants are cooler than anything you'll ever hear instead of a football game. I was at a Philly Union game recently, and the opposing team's coach was Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney is one of the greatest English soccer players of all time. He's played in multiple World Cups, won multiple Premier League titles. And for 90 minutes, Philly Union fans chanted, he's drunk, he's on a bender, Wayne Rooney is a sex offender. <laughs> For 90 minutes they scream this. He's drunk, he's on a bender. Wayne Rooney is a sex offender. He's drunk, he's on a bender. Wayne Rooney is a sex offender. A father screamed this so much to the point where his 10 year old son turns to him and he goes, hey dad, what's a sex offender? <laughs> dad says, well, a sex offender is the reason you've never met your uncle. Those weren't your cousins in those pictures. Smartphones, they're everywhere too. You know, they're little robots in their pocket. Right, they're everywhere. But smartphones, they're just ruining things, aren't they? Yeah. 
I did, yeah. Like they're ruining the art of pushing people in the pools. <laughs> it's one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> it's really expensive now if you do it. Oh my god. Well, they won't troll you on social media, right? Because they don't have to film anymore. <laughs> It's a long day, folks, seriously. I thought if I put this tie on, I'd warm up and feel important. I still feel important. You guys are great. I really appreciate it. You guys, thank you so much. My, uh, my mom, though, she doesn't have a smartphone. She's like, avoids technology. You know, but she did get a flip phone recently, um, which is, it's good, I guess. And she texted me for the first time ever, about a week ago it was. And, I didn't know who it was. It was from an unknown number. Just said, hey, sweetie, with a sideways winky face. <laughs> I was like, looking at him, like, oh. And I was just like browsing, just browsing on a dating app. <laughs> so I just assumed it was from that. So uh, naturally, I replied with a dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my mom texted back. Oh, hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> One of my problems I used to have is that I had a hard time sleeping, but it's gotten better ever since I started taking these magnesium pills before bed. Um, my dad pretty much immediately shut that down. Um, I'm realizing as I'm talking that I have mommy daddy issues, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. Um, but my dad immediately was like, Anna, you're wasting your money. You know, that's just the placebo effect. And I was like, uh, okay. But secretly, I'm embarrassed, okay? Because I hate the, I think the placebo effect is embarrassing, you know? It's just corny. It's like the end of a Disney movie. It's like you're telling me the whole time I just had to believe in myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's hard for me to believe in myself. And I'm not just saying that. It's because, like, I'm a very weak person. And I know that I'm weak because, like, I faint all the time. <laughs> I faint so much, like, I know the signs of when I'm about to faint. Like, I can feel it. And I'm never like, oh, let me tell someone. Or like, oh, let me stop this. I'm always like, oh, nice. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> and as I go down, I always have this petty thought where I'm like, and you know what? Maybe this can be a lesson to those around me. <laughs> Rethink the way they treat old Anna Gallagher. <laughs> Kicking her grand a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and also, every fainter knows like, fainting in front of a big group of people, not a problem, okay? That's actually ideal. What's, what sucks is when you faint just alone. Because when you faint alone, like in the middle of doing laundry, you just have to wake back up and be like, life is crazy. <laughs> well, I'm in a relationship, give up for that, right? Yeah, give up for love. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's going good. Uh, unfortunately, her parents do not like me. Uh, but I am adopted, so this this has happened before. Basically, we, always, we bounce back. We always bounce back. That's no, going good. My parents were like, when we started dating, we weren't sure what we were looking for. You know, it's like, hey, you looking for you know, friends with benefits, maybe you know, open relationship. I was like, maybe we'll try polyamory. I don't know. I was like, you know what? I'm traditional. Just cheat on me, okay? That's. <laughs> Call me old-fashioned. We live together, that's awesome. My favorite part of living together is we have separate bedrooms. We into it, you guys like it? Married couple? Are you guys married? Maybe you're not sitting together for a reason. Uh, we're married. Okay, it's fine, we're gonna open things up. I don't know what you're doing. That's, you met this guy. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we have separate bedrooms, oh, I'm into it. I love it. I think my favorite part of separate bedrooms is we can still feel like we're kind of single, you know? Go to bed in our separate bedrooms. I'll shoot her a text. What's going on? You up? You want to come by? <laughs> she comes over. We have sex. Afterwards, I'm like, you should, you should go. <laughs> you need to leave. Get out of here. Now, I am a gentleman. I always walk her to her door. Okay, guys? That's the nice thing to do, young man. Learn from me. No, we always have sex uh, in her room because she hates mine. She does not like, she doesn't like, I only have one pillow. She does not like that. Women don't like that. Pillow talk in my bedroom, just who gets this pillow? That's how it was. When I was dating, women hated it. They'd be like, what can a guy 
only has one pillow. I don't know what kind of lady uh, can't take a hint. Please leave. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. You guys remember the Tempur-Pedic mattress? You know that mattress? See the commercial for it? People jumping on the bed and the wine doesn't spill. That's not why they made that bed, right? People aren't calling mattress companies like every time I jump on the bed, I spill my wine. <laughs> it's like now nah, they're like, I hate my wife. What can you do? What do you got? <laughs> I want to forget that she's there. So my girlfriend and I actually just broke up. I uh, just haven't written new jokes yet. It takes a lot of, <laughs> takes a lot of time to write these. So I'm going to need to coast off these for jokes for another two years at least. Uh, maybe then, you know, my next girlfriend will fit some of them and I won't have to change them. But yeah, we broke up recently. That was a bummer. This is, uh, this is my least favorite breakup that I think I've ever been through, probably because it wasn't my idea. So that hurt. Uh, but it was a bummer. It was a bummer. She sat me down. And she told me, she's like, John, I love you, but not romantically. You are my family. Has anyone else ever been put in the family zone? Is that a thing that's happened? <laughs> the family zone. <laughs> but I'm terrified to date again in my 30s, especially as a short man. I was on Tinder and this woman in her bio said, um, don't be the height of a fifth grader. <laughs> so then I had to do a Google search and I am taller than a fifth grade boy. Heads up, lady. <laughs> All right, taller than a fifth grade boy. Not taller than the girls. They grow fast at that age. They are just skyrocketing one day. Also, pretty sure that Google search put me on a list. I don't feel good about that. Because <laughs> uh, I really, I want to be a mom. I want to have kids. I love kids. Uh, I have a little niece. But no, she's so cool. She's got such a chaotic energy. And I cannot wait to see what kind of weirdo she turns into. Because all little girls, you guys maybe don't know this, all little girls are weird. Like, my sister was pretty chill. She was just a tomboy. But all my friends were dog bitches and horse girls. <laughs> I would go over to my one friend's house and she was so much fun. And she, anytime you asked her like, oh, what are you gonna be when you grow up? She would say, I am going to be a Cocker Spaniel. Um, <laughs> um, she was very emphatic and most adults in our lives would be like, oh, that's a weird kid, cool, and just move on. But then new neighbors moved in and they did not have kids. And the wife said, Ashley, what are you gonna be when you grow up? And she said, I am going to be a Cocker Spaniel. And this woman had the audacity to say, <laughs> you can't be a Cocker Spaniel. And Ashley looked at her with all sincerity and went, a golden retriever would be fine too. But I went up to my friend afterwards and I was like, Ashley, why did you say that? And she said, well, because I've been thinking about it a lot, Elle. And, um, and we're getting bigger, and I just don't think that I'm small enough to be a Cocker Spaniel anymore. Uh, so guys, I'm Ellie Summerling. I grew up religious. I grew up like an evangelical teen. Anyone else? No, that's okay. Like when I got to college, I just like, I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, it's like, it's uh, this whole religion thing. I don't like it. I'm throwing it away. I'm an atheist now, but I'm 30 now. And it turns out that I have low self-esteem and I believe in magic. Like I just want someone to tell me what to do. So I am I'm like searching for a religion that's going to work for me. And when I was growing up, I was always really jealous of the Catholic kids. Um, I thought they were really cool. I thought they got to wear cool outfits. Um, and I, there's something about Catholicism. It's like, I know that it's like, they've got had a tough couple of decades, but there's something about the way that they present religion that's like th with the paintings and the gold and the vestments and sex cells, you know, especially if it's a little gay. <laughs> uh, I thought about Satanism. Um, any Satanists in the house? <laughs> no, that's okay. I, it would actually be perfect for me personally because I do have a third nipple and that's what they call in the biz a uh, witch's teat. That's how they used to tell if you were a witch in like Salem. Um, and in Salem in the, you know, the 1600s, my third nipple would have gotten me burned at the stake, but in Philadelphia in 2023, it just makes me a catch, you know? And let's keep these good times rolling, guys. And put your hands together. <laughs>
I think conspiracy theorists are the least discreet people on the internet. We all have one friend who's worried about government spying where their information's out in the public. I had a friend who was like a huge anti-vaxxer during the time of the pandemic. I remember one day he goes, Aaron, I respect your decision, but I'm not getting the vaccine. I asked him why. He goes, because the government's using the vaccine to put chips in people in order to track them. I was like, dude, I see all of your Venmo transactions. <laughs> all of your drug deals are public. Why is he going to pay that said drugs, JK, DEF NOT WEED, DEF NOT WEED in all caps? <laughs> I think children of celebrities fascinate me. Either they can follow in their parents' footsteps, or they can become like Chet Hanks. For those of you who don't know who Chet Hanks is, Chet Hanks is the son of Tom Hanks. He's a rapper that came out the song White Boy Summer. But White Boy Summer is a stupid name for his song because the son's white people's worst enemy. I'm looking around the room, it wasn't the best season for some of you guys recently. <laughs> That's why White Boy Winter makes way more sense. You can do safe white activities. Like skiing, polar plunges, storming the capital, safe white activities. I date white women if you can't tell by the vibe I give. Um, we're being honest right here. I think the hardest part about dating white women is realizing which ones are racist after sleeping with them. <laughs> like, I was with a girl in college, and after we finished, she goes, I've dated a lot of black guys, but you're not a nig. Ooh. So I pistol whipped her with my dick. <laughs> Gave her the mob of Molly Wop. <laughs> Guys, I'm Aaron Bell, peace. This is fun. <sighs> I should have drank coffee or something. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm dragging up here. I'm sorry, I've never really drank coffee before. I, I, I drink coffee now. Um, it's pretty late. I'm pretty late to it. I don't know. I just thought I always tasted like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I found out that I'm a, a dark roast, you know. No cream, no sugar. Black coffee. It's great. It's bold. It kind of gets the senses going, you know. And uh, coincidentally, ever since I started drinking coffee, uh, a lot of doors open for me. Mainly the back door. <laughs> Jesus. Coffee hyper spaces through my colon like a million falcon. Punch it, Chewy. That was a Star Wars reference. Big fan of Star Wars, but I'm not a fan of when people put a Star Wars reference right in the middle of a normal conversation. You know what I mean? Like, I saw Star Wars too, you know, I get it. I get it. It's a trap. <laughs> I don't know. When people do that, I just find it very jar jar. <laughs> <laughs> These are jokes, people. Come on, how's the joke? Uh, all right. I'm going to get out of here, but I'm going to tell you I'm not a fan of something else. I'm not a fan of public bathrooms. <laughs> you know, like a warm toilet seat at home, it's paradise, isn't it? But a warm toilet seat. In public? It's a mystery. <laughs> now, I don't know what I saw. People are gross, you know? Speaking about that, don't make a mess in the bathroom. I gotta clean it up. My name's Shabak Draven. Woo! Receiving compliments is hard. That's why I have a strategy. Um, okay, if someone ever says something nice to you, any compliment, all you gotta do is just immediately reveal something about yourself that is disgusting. You know? <laughs> like, for example, someone would say to me, like, Oh, Anna, you have such beautiful eyes. To which I would respond, Oh my god, it's so funny you say that, because I actually have an anxiety disorder where I pick out my eyebrow hairs and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Threat neutralized. <laughs> okay? And that is true. I do have that disorder. It's called trichotillomania. Um, and I'm pretty open about it. Um, I feel like it's, like, I'm not really ashamed, I feel like it's like my superpower. It makes me a more kind, empathetic person. Because usually like when I'm in the middle of like, um, about to judge someone for being weird, or making a bad decision, I'm like in the middle of eating my eyebrow hairs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> we all have our things. <laughs> Has anyone picked up a re newspaper recently? 
The first thing that happens when you pick up a newspaper is it falls apart. <laughs> and also, the newspaper, like, the layout is so complicated. Like, even if you bring yourself to read a newspaper article, you'll be like two paragraphs in. And then it's like, if you want the rest of the story, you got to turn to page A006. <laughs> and I mean, that's like an ugly person playing hard to get. <laughs> like, all right, I'm tapping out. I don't care that much. The, the other thing from old timey times I'm gonna attack. I know, you're probably like, whoa, she's gonna go after racism, sexism, homophobia. No. Cobblestone roads. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy that people back then used to drive over cobblestone roads and be like, hmm. Move. <laughs> because now I feel like when my GPS takes me over Cobblestone Road, it's like, oh, cool. Now I have adult onset chicken baby syndrome. <laughs> and I'm going to end up. And I was on a date with this lady, and she said that she thinks that watching porn is cheating. I don't agree. I was like, lady, I've already cheated on you on this date, okay? That's how that works. I went home with this woman. And, um, you know, we go to a room, we're fooling around. And she puts the brakes on things. She stops. She's like, I'm sorry. I'm just, like, not comfortable being the kind of girl who sleeps with two guys on back-to-back -back nights. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you didn't have to say any of that. <laughs> you didn't not have to tell me that. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I just have this date tomorrow night. And it's, it's, <laughs> anyway, it's not fair. But uh, yeah, I like I like a one night stand. I like a one night stand. I once had a one night stand with a sixty five year old woman. I don't usually go for older women. Uh, nothing against them. It's just that, as I mentioned before, I am adopted. She's out there somewhere. You know, it's a gamble. It's risky. My friends like this bar, the Cougar Bar. They're always trying to get to go, get me to go. They're like, come on, man, let's go meet some cougars. Let's go meet some milfs. I'm like, look, guys, there's only one milf for me, okay? And that's the mom. I'd like to find. Okay, that's my kind of <laughs> Man, they drag me to the cougar bar. Immediately, this woman strikes up a conversation with me. She's like, oh my god, you look just like a friend I had years ago. She's like, can I buy you a drink? Now, obviously, when someone buys you a drink, you have to have sex with them, so that's where that went. And uh, I guess technically, if that woman is my mother, it is not a one-night stand. Uh, because I've been inside her before, right? That's how that works. And I like jokes that just upset people. That's always that. So, no, I don't. I don't think that lady's my mom. It seems unlikely, right? Unlikely. The next morning when I got up, she was gone. What are the odds the same lady abandoned me twice, right? That seems unlikely. Thanks so much, for you guys, for hanging out. You know, this is really cool. This happens once a month, so be sure to catch us again. Come back. We have great comedians all the time. Philadelphia Grimm, here at Zimbabwe Temple Skate Design. Give it up for yourselves. Yeah!